is the best all-terrain EMTB below $2,000? I think it's clearly the Radon ZR Team Hybrid Series, but is it really that good? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome! Great to meet you, everybody! If you've ever wondered why e-mountain bikes are that expensive, well, there are plenty of reasons for that. First of all, bikes are getting more expensive in the past few years, but um, e-mountain bikes usually have an extra motor and an extra battery, which, well, they're quite pricey and they add usually a payload of somewhere between five and seven kilograms on top of what the rest of the bike components represent. But because of these added payloads, most of the manufacturers are forced to use slightly better grade of components in order to make sure that the structure is safe and sound. And this is why this particular model, the ZR Team Hybrid 6.0, by Radon caught my attention because I feel it is the best value e-mounting bike that you can buy right now in 2024 with a Bosch backed motor. Is it? We'll find out soon enough. Radon is a German brand which mostly sells its models on the popular bike discount platform, offering in most cases the absolutely best value ratio. And despite the fact the model costs significantly less than the competition, you can well notice that during the unboxing stage there seems to be nothing missing at the first sight. Unlike many of the Chinese or other budget-oriented brands where you need to do a lot of the assembling by yourself, Radon have pre-assembled everything, so it's basically opening the cardboard, a surprisingly tall box for the record, just lay it on the side and pull the bike out. The only thing that you should usually adjust in this case is the handlebar. I say usually because the front brake was wrongly installed, in my case, and the cable was going behind the stem and I've almost torn it. In order to fix, I had to remove the handlebar and the grip and readjust. Other than that, you can well notice the Bosch logo, a very capable motor installed inside, with good, decent removable battery, and it even has stamps matching the colors of the frame. The bike arrives without pedals, so this is the only component you need to prepare in advance. If you need a checklist before the first ride, of course read the manuals, check the tire pressure, adjust the seat post level, check the brakes, recharge the battery, that's the usual kind of stuff. It's also a good idea to clear the area about the top features before I start talking about the test results. There are three different frame sizes for this one, pretty good for cross-country purposes geometry. The motor is Bosch Performance Line CX Generation 4 with 85Nm of torque. There's a 500W battery, hydraulic disc brakes, 180mm disc size, RockShox Judy front fork, Shimano Olivio rear derailleur, 29-inch tires and weight is just above 20 kilograms. It's true, most of these specs sound quite fascinating and there's something I can't keep calm about. Well, a simple fact that if you decide to buy all these components separately and put them together into an e-bike, just think about it, the Bosch CX Generation 4 motor is going to cost about $900 if you buy it aftermarket. The battery, the 500 watt, our battery is gonna cost about six to seven hundred dollars, meaning that if you only buy the motor and the battery, this is pretty much going to match the price you pay for this entire hardtail electric mountain bike, which is pretty insane. Well, the, the thing is that Radon is a brand they operate primarily on the bike discount platform, which is a German website, and Bosch is also a German company, meaning that most likely they can negotiate some better prices about the motor and battery pack combos, which is good for them, also very good for us as customers, because you practically get most of these parts, well, for free, not entirely, but you get the idea. The thing is that uh, even like that, most of these parts are actually decent or not, well, something we can confirm through a bit more testing. The motor tests come first, and I've always had my sympathy so as the performance line series by Bosch. My own EMTB is equipped with such kind of a system. I'm riding it already for close to 2000 kilometers without any issues, so I was certain that this is a great choice. At the moment of making the video, most motor makers are anyway stuck around 80 to 90 newton meters maximum torque, so it would be technically correct to say that the Radon ZR Team Hybrid Series is as powerful as the Orbea Wild Series, for instance, which cost above $10,000. 
So this appears to be the greatest advantage of the Radon model overall. Because this Bosch motor is equipped with a torque sensor, there is no such thing as ghost pedaling and with the highest mode of assistance, it's gonna be extra powerful, letting you accelerate to the maximum within just a few seconds. There are four grades of assistance. This is the slightly older Purion display, which is small, responsive and perfectly visible at day or night. As for the range, there are a lot of variables. They say up to 90 km realistic range. If I'm lazy and I'm in the mountain going up, the worst I've ever had with the Bosch motor is about 15 km with crazy denivelation. On the other hand, I've had achievements close to 200 km per cycle, with much more pedaling from my end, of course. Realistically, 50 to 80 is what most people would get on flat roads and it's gonna be less in the mountain, and I strongly recommend you to take a look from time to time at the range estimation that you can find on the display for each of the support levels, very trustworthy information. Since Radon had the slower type of a charger, just 2 amps, it's gonna take a bit longer to recharge, you can buy yourself a 4 amp charger if you wanna speed up this procedure. Riding the ZR Team Hybrid 6 is rather boring, perhaps the frame is intentionally designed to be somewhat conservative, the head angle is 70 degrees, a bit too much for calling it pure cross-country, so perfect for flatter type of terrains, and something to take into consideration if you want to spend more time descending on mountain trails. There's a 720mm handlebar, pretty good for the geometry of the bike, lets you easily maneuver. Because this particular bike is going to be mostly used by my wife and son, I've chosen size M, suitable for heights between 170 and 185 centimeters. I feel quite comfortable with it too, despite my 188. No dropper comes as a standard component, but given the nature of the bike, I'd recommend this to be one of your first upgrades. The bike allows internal cabling for a dropper, so that you maintain the cable-free frame, something that comes as a pleasant surprise for this price point. Together with the brakes, of course. The iconic Shimano MD200, not because they are new or super great or massively preferred, it's because they represent the perfect ratio between price and performance. Being a hardtail bike, we only have a front fork here, yes, it is RockShox, and no, it is nothing too good. The coil-based Judy here with 100mm drive and still, it can beat a lot of other budget bikes. But being a coil-based suspension, there's no option to adjust according to the rider's weight and you can only control the preload or lock it. While this whole thing is not too terrible, I would still consider this to be one of the areas to be upgraded at some point. The frame has conical shape on the front and most good forks are gonna fit well. Such an upgrade may actually change the geometry a little bit, so maybe going beyond 130mm drive for a fork is not such a good idea. For what it's worth, even with this heavy kind of a front suspension, the bike feels rather lightweight for the standards of EMTBs. There also are mechanical gears, backed by a Shimano Alivio derailleur. The cassette could have been more oriented towards climbing, but I guess Radon go for speedy cassette because of the powerful motor. Yet another area you may consider upgrading, though. The remaining components are also fine, well, pretty basic grips. The crankset, the chain, they're good, luckily no area where Radon have been cutting corners. The rims are tubeless ready, with continental Ruban tires on top, 29 by 2 3 inches, yet another component which is surprisingly good. The wider tires sort of compensate the not-so-great working front fork, but of course going for an air-backed one is going to improve the comfort regardless. Maybe I did mention it already, but the best part about this bike is the price. 1600 euro, which is close to 750 US dollars at the moment of making the video, a price that is perfect for what the bike provides. I honestly doubt that this kind of discount is going to last for much longer, and for $100 more, you may grab the A.0 edition with air fork and somewhat better gears. The only scenario where another bike can match this deal is an end-of-season sale or something. Let me know in the comments below if you managed to find a similarly great or a better EMTB deal right now. And before the wrap-up, let me focus on the not-so-positive. Besides the wrongly mounted front 
front brake cable at the start and uh, the not integrated in the frame battery and the lack of pedals in the assembly, I don't think there is anything else to bothering. If you manage to catch some other drawbacks, of course, let me know in the comments below. Bottom line, it's real, it works, performance is great and uh, at this price point, I think we can agree that it is absolutely the best value hardtail e mountain bike that you can buy right now in 2024 at least here in europe if you know about some great deals in your region let me know in the comment section below the video but you can't go wrong with this body especially knowing that it's backed by the bosch cx generation 4 which is as powerful as some of the most expensive e-bikes out there unbelievable well if you want to go for slightly higher grade of components uh air fork and uh, a bit better derailleur maybe you can check the um, CX Hybrid, uh, sorry, the ZR Team <laughs> Hybrid 8.0 and, and some of the other Radon e-bike models uh, because even their full suspension e-bikes are also tremendously great. So that's been everything about this episode and thank you very much for watching it. If you want to support my work here on the channel, well, maybe you can think about subscribing, like the video and come back for more in a few days time. Stay safe, wear protection. And I guess I'm going to see you soon. Bye.